uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Lord's Day worship. Of course, part of that whole day worship is God giving us instructions. So we have Sabbath school, wherein God teaches us with uh, uh, His uh, doctrines uh, pertaining to the gospel and, of course, the scripture. So today uh, is May 1, as you know. Uh, sorry, May 8. May 1, last week. Sorry. May 8. No? Pinapagising ko lang kayo. Good morning. Oh, ngayon, gising. Okay. So May 8 today. And alam nyo kung ano celebrate natin? Lord's Day. Yes. Okay. But also, no? Dahil sa common grace ng Panginoon, no? may, mga, may mga celebrations din, no? katulad ng Mother's Day. So, gusto ko batiin lahat ng mothers. Happy Mother's Day po sa lahat. Uh, we appreciate you and we love you. So, praise God for your ministry at home. So, I'm sure also, no, uh, while the world celebrates... The Mother's Day, or specifically the Philippines, Philippines, ngayon, no? Mother's Day ngayon, sa Pilipinas lang. Uh, ang Roman Catholicism, I would say, um, kung baga tayo ino-honor natin ang ating mga nanay, mga mothers, ang Roman Catholicism, kakaiba ang kanilang honoring pagdating sa kanilang queen, or yung term na mother of God. And, or, of course, I'm referring to none other than Mary, that is our last lecture for this series, is Roman Catholicism a Christian religion? I hope medyo nasasagot na natin yung tanong na yun. Our topic this morning is Romanism's Theology of Mary. Okay, as you know, in Roman Catholicism, highly revered talaga si Mary that they even create or make images of her. And there's no problem showing images of Mary because really, we believe that she's not God in the first place. So that is technically not a violation of the second commandment. I want to say, I just want to show though, na sa mga images ni Mary, although they highly revere her, na para sa kanila, in a way, parang we worship na nila, although they would, um, they would say na hindi nila we worship, but obviously, their actions speak louder than words. Makikita natin sa mga images na iba-iba rin yung itsura ni Mary. No? Iba-iba. Sa Africa, ganito yung imahe ni Mary. Sa Par- Paraguay, ganito din. Usually, they're under, kapag gumagawa sila ng image ni Mary, kung mapapansin nyo, mayroong pagkakawangis noong uh, lugar. No? Kung, siya, kung ito ay taga Paraguay, mayroong konting kahawig ng mga citizens ng Paraguay. No? Ano pa? Sa Belgium, ganun din. Okay? Our la- uh, their lady, their lady, lady of Buring, <laughs> Belgium. May pronoun naman. Our Lady of... Ano. Okay. Our Lady of Shishan, China. So, si medyo may pagkakahawig, right? Tinakpan ko lang yung hawak niya kasi, of course, ang sinasabi doon ay si Jesus daw yun. Okay? Also, Miracle of Ago, you're probably familiar with, with this, no? Si Judiel Nieva, uh, who is now a... Uh, he, he's really saying that he's now a transgender. Uh, siya, yun na siya ngayon, sinasabi niya. Uh, he's proud naman to say that. So, anyway, so that's him. Uh, nakita daw niya si Mary many times for many years. At uh, that, yung ribulto ni Mary, I, it, it healed a lot of uh, uh, sickness. And that it was, ano daw, uh, lumuluha ng dugo. E kung naabutan nyo, tabutan ko kasi ito eh, sa TV, ang dami talagang bumibisita. Thousands and thousands of people. Okay? Now, I'd like to quote R.C. Sproul, sabi niya. Like the notion of papal infallibility, many Roman Catholic teachings on Mariology, ibig sabihin ng Mariology, the study of Mary. Okay? Roman Catholic teachings on Mariology were not formally defined until well after the Reformation. In fact, in the case of Mary, most of the definitions were laid down in 19th century. Right? And again, in, recently in 1950. 
Ibig sabihin, yung kanilang uh, prayers to Mary, uh, reverence kay Mary, are basically not a theology, not a practice that can be traced back from the apostles. Okay? Th- this is a new theology. Okay? Now, if you remember our study of uh, images, we tackled, we differentiated the different, the different devotions of Roman Catholics. Sinabi natin na tinatawag na latria yung devotion nila sa Panginoong Diyos. Okay? Ibig sabihin yung latria, that's the highest form of worship. Okay? And then they say na pagdating kay Mary, hindi naman same, it's just hyperdulia ang tawag nila. Okay? Yun daw yung devotion nila kay Mary. And then yung sa kanilang devotion sa mga images, sa mga statues, relics, ay tinatawag nilang dulya or it's a, more, it's a lower form of their worship. This is their way to, of course, to na para magbigay ng rason na hindi kapantay ang worship ng nila kay Mary sa Diyos. But really, again, hindi when you look at the practice, it's basically the same. No? But then for them, okay, we can differentiate it into uh, dulial, hyperdulia, and latria. Okay? Now, let me try to give you uh, these points para maintindihan natin bakit ganon kalalim ang kanilang devotion kay Mary. Okay? Firstly, they believe that Mary is the mother of God. Okay? Now, uh, before we say, na uy, teka, ano yan ah, uh, masama sabihin yan. Before we say that, a lot of Protestants in their time accepted that term. Because if we explain it uh, properly, that's true. Totoo naman. That Mary was the mother of God, that term, ang ibig sabihin nito, magsasabi lang ako ng, ter- ng, ng Greek, Greek term, Theotokos, ang ibig sabihin nito ay God-bearer. Okay? God-bearer. And again, sabi ko nga, accepted itong term na ito, kasi this is the term that the Council of Ephesus and Council of Chalcedon used. And they used such term, at naalala nyo why there are councils? Do you remember why there are documents made in those councils? It is to combat heresies. Ibig sabihin, there was a heresy before. Okay? What was that heresy? It's called Nestorianism. Nestorianism. Ano yung Nestorianism? They believed that Jesus Christ had two natures. Okay? And they, sorry, they believe that they have that Jesus Christ had two persons kasi tama naman yung two natures. Okay? Sumobra yung understanding nila na kumbaga parang magkahiwalay na magkahiwalay yung deity ni Christ at yung humanity ni Christ that they're speaking like Christ already had two persons. Okay? For example, Jesus was really a man, at yung understanding na Jesus was really a man and then when he was born here the, 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 the deity of Christ ay kinuha noong, kumbaga binahay, namahay yung deity ni Christ doon sa katawang tao ni Christ. Right? Kaya, kaya para sa kanila, Christ is what? Jesus Christ is, naniniwala sila sa tinatawag na Christotokos or Christ bearer. Yung humanity ni Christ, yun yung Christ bearer. Okay? Kasi dalawa daw ang persona ng Diyos. Si, si Heso Kristo, I mean. Okay? Tama naman that there are two natures. Deity and humanity. It's something mysterious. Okay? If, if ever na tayo namuhay sa panahon ni Kristo, we're not gonna see the actual kung ano yung itsura ng Diyos, ng, 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 ng Diyos as Christ. Makikita natin tao. Kasi tao talaga si Kristo. But the mystery there is that he is God. He is God and He is man. So there are two natures. But the historians believe that hindi lang two natures ito, two persons. Ibig sabihin, sa krus, it was Christ who suffered. The human Christ suffered. Sobrang napaghihiwalay nila. 
nung nagsuffer si Christ, nung siya ay uh, dinuraduraan, uh, siya ay sinap, siya ay uh, uh, winip ng mga soldiers, it was the human Christ. Tanggalin natin sa story dito yung, yung deity niya. So, ikita nyo how sobrang sineseparate nila yung dalawang natures ni Christ that they are now speaking of two persons na parang dalawang tao sa loob ng iisang katawan. Okay? Ganun yung understanding nila. And so they believe, sa mga historians, they believe in what we call Christotokos or Christ bearer. Na yung deity ni Cristo ay was uh, namahay doon sa katawang tao. At yung taong yun ay totoong tao. Okay? Totoong tao siya at yung deity parang ano siya? Parang ice cream sa cone. Yung ice cream ay inilagay sa cone, yung deity ay inilagay doon sa tao. Ganun siya. Christ bearer. Okay? Yung messiahship niya ay daladala ng humanity yun. Pero sabi ng mga, sabi ng mga uh, tao sa Council of Ephesus and Council of Chalcedon, they're saying na, that he is not just a uh, Christ bearer. No? Uh, in fact, uh, what would the, the real term is really Theotokos, God bearer. That in fact, Mary is Theotokos. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nito, ulitin ko lang just to clarify, si Mary is someone who uh, daladala niya ang kanyang anak na si Yeso Cristo. Uh, the, for the Nestorians, they believe that he was just a human being even in his even in her womb at nang nanganak nang pinanganak si Kristo tsaka dumating yung deity so ibig sabihin uh, kung nabanggit ko kanina si Kristo yung Christ bearer no? si Mary ang Christ bearer ibig sabihin hindi, hindi Diyos naniniwala sila hindi Diyos yung nandoon sa chan he was just a Christ bearer a human being na kapag siya'y pinanganak that's the time the Christ bearer will be there uh, that, that's the time the deity will be there Okay? Pero sinasabi ng mga ng nasa Council of Ephesus, hindi. Diyos na yan. Diyos yan. God man yan. So they were speaking of Theotokos, God bearer, si Mary. So nothing wrong with the term. God bearer. Kasi Diyos naman talaga si Jesus. Hindi lang siya mere human being na nagsuot lang ng damit na Diyos Diyosan nung siya'y pinanganak. Hindi. Siya ay Diyos. God bearer. Okay? So theologically, they understood Christ as a combination of both human and divine, with the divine inhabiting, at yung mga historians, a true human named Jesus. And that Jesus was truly just a man prior the divine inhabitation. Okay? So they see Mary as just Christotokos, but we're saying that Mary is really Theotokos. God si Christ sa loob ni Mary. So we should properly define the term mother of God to mean that Mary was the one who gave birth to the one who is God. Okay? I quoted a, uh, a statement of a theologian, Jaroslav Pelikan, yun ang sinabi niya, that Mary was the one who gave birth to the one who is God. Okay? Sabi rin ni Lorraine Boitner, he said, The Bible calls Mary the mother of Jesus, but gives her, to, uh, gives her no other title. All that the Roman church has to substantiate her worship of Mary is a sheaf of traditions entirely outside the Bible, telling of her appearances to certain monks, nuns, and others venerated as saints. At first glance, the, the term mother of God may seem comparatively harmless, but the actual consequence is that through its use, Roman Catholics come to look upon Mary as stronger, more mature, and more powerful than Christ. To them, she becomes the source of his being and overshadows him. So they go to her, not to him. The problem is that the term that was widely used by many Protestants even before, that was widely accepted by such councils, na tama naman na siya ay mother of God talaga, na ang daladala niya ay Diyos, hindi lang 
uh, tao na magdadala na mag inhabit ng deity in the future, uh, ang ginawa ng Roman Catholicism, they used such term and binago nila in a sense na parang kung siya ay nanay ng Diyos, eh di dapat ang reverence sa kanya eh either katumbas or probably mas malalim. Ganoon na nangyari sa Roman Catholicism. If the Roman terminology is correct and Mary is to be called God's mother again, ha, nagkaroon ng bagong terminology or understanding ang Roman Catholicism sa mother of God. Ha? Okay, just to be clear, the councils before just referred to Jesus Christ as God inside Mary's womb. But they're saying, iba yung understanding nila ng mother of God. Okay, so iba yung terminology nila ng mother of God. So if the Roman terminology is correct and Mary is to be called God's, God's mother, then Joseph what was God's stepfather. James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas were God's brothers. Elizabeth what was God's aunt. John the Baptist was God's cousin. Heli was God's grandfather. And Adam was God's 59th great-grandfather. What is stopping also the Roman Catholicism to na hindi ilab- bigyan ng label din yung ibang uh, names doon sa genealogy na makikita natin sa Matthew chapter 1. Okay? Secondly, Romanism believes the immaculate conception of Mary. That, ano yung sabihin ng immaculate conception? That Mary was sinless. Okay? Now, this Immaculate Conception doctrine was established by Pope Pius IX in his encyclical on 1854. Remember, when they make dogmas, they, they have to do it ex cathedra, that they have to be sitting down on their official chair in order for them to make one a doctrine. So that is what Pope Pius IX did. He wrote this while sitting on his official chair, saying that, uh, he aff- affirming that affirming the doctrine of immaculate conception and redefining it and say and says that Mary was in fact sinless. Now I say that immaculate conception was affirmed by then because it was a term known even before Pope Pius wrote in his encyclicals. Oh yes, Pope Pius the ninth because even before 1854 many Protestants thought that the immaculate conception of Mary meant that she bore a sinless savior. So see how Roman Catholicism used such terminology. Again, no, kagaya ng mother of God, ginagamit nila yung term na yon and of course, redefine it and exalting uh, a human being. Okay? So again, ang understanding when it says immaculate conception is that Mary has conceived a sinless savior ang kanyang ipinanganak ay walang kasalanan. However, ang ginawa nitong si Pope Pius IX, he sat on his chair, affirmed it, a Roman Catholic doctrine, redefined it as Mary having no original sin and was sinless throughout her life on earth. Okay? Their point is this. They believed that Mary had to be sinless in order to conceive the sinless Jesus Christ. Para nga naman, maipanganak niya ang sinless na si Kristo, dapat siya rin ay sinless. Na ako, opinion ko lang, hindi ko nanilagay dyan. Ano rin ang nagsastop sa kanila na yung maghulang ni Mary ay hindi maging sinless din? I mean, if, we're, if we follow the same uh, logic. But we're saying, no, there is original sin. Sabi nga ni, uh, ni David sa Psalm chapter 51 verse 5, uh, siya ay ipinanganak ng makasalanan. Okay? Why? Because we have a representative in the Garden of Eden. Tinatawag nating federal head. When we say federal head, someone who represented us, if he was obedient, that the whole mankind would be obedient. If he was disobedient, then the whole mankind would also fo- uh, be guilty of sin, will be disobedient because of their sin. He was the federal head of mankind, and because he sinned, original sin is by immediate imputation of his sin 
and the fall. Ang ibig sabihin ng imputation, yung kasalanan ni Adan ay na-count po sa atin. It has been counted to us. Ibig sabihin, God looks at us as sinners because the representative, because the federal head, sin. Okay? Sabi sa Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. Okay? Dahil lang sa isang kasalanan, ni na uh, no, 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 nangyari sa Garden of Eden dahil sa kasalanan ni Adan through one man pumasok ang kamatayan karon ng kamatayan and so death spread also lahat din ay uh, lahat tayo inevitable ang kamatayan sa atin ano yung sinasabi ni Paul dito because Adam alone sinned hindi he counts is uh, he counted it as also our sin dahil tayo rin ay nagkasala Thirdly, so again, mother of God, immaculate conception. Thirdly, they believe that Mary is a co-redemptrix. Okay, co-redemptrix. Ibig sabihin, Mary, along with Christ, are both causes, are both source of salvation. Medyo mabigat yun, ha? Mabigat na yung mga una. Mabigat din ito. Okay? Now, if we read yung Luke chapter 1 verses 30 to 38, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be reading it. If you remember this, this is the scene, nung annunciation when the angel announced to Mary, sabi niya, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be? Since I am a virgin. Sabi ni Mary. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. That's that John the Baptist. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Ito na. Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be. Yung mga phrase na let it be, uh, may term dyan. Ang tawag dyan ay fiat. F-I-A-T. Fiat. Ibig sabihin decree. Let it be to me according to your word. Sabi ni Mary. Ang ibig sabihin nito, that she had to be the one. Kailangan niyang mag-agree. Kung hindi siya nag-agree, hindi matutuloy si Christ. That's why he, she's a co-redemptrix. Because of her fiat, because of her statement, let it be. Ibig sabihin, no, let, it be the, let, it, let, let me be the one to bear the sinless Savior. Parang ganun. Okay? Hindi lang ito act of God. There is, in a way, a cooperation with Mary. Sabi nga ni Pope Pius XII sa kanyang mystical body of Christ na encyclical. Venerable brethren, may the Virgin Mother of God hear the prayers of our paternal heart, which are yours also, and obtain for all a true love of the Church. She whose sinless soul was filled with the divine Spirit of Jesus Christ above all other created souls, and who, in the name of the whole human race, gave her consent for a spiritual marriage between the Son of God and human nature. Within her vir virginal womb, Christ our Lord already bore the exalted title of head of the church. In a marvelous birth, she brought, forth, she brought him forth as the source of all supernatural life and presented him. She presented him. Pinresent pa daw ni Mary. Okay? Nearly born as prophet, king, and priest to those who, from among Jews and Gentiles, were the first to come to adore him. Mabigat to. That Mary gave her consent. Let it be. No? Sabi ni Mary. Okay? Kumbaga, as a sinless co-redemptrix, as a sinless 
cooperative source of redemption, inoffer daw niya si Kristo sa Diyos Ama. Okay? Makikita rin natin yung uh, pagiging co-redemptrix ni Mary in Ave Maria. Sa prayer na Ave Maria, Hail Mary, sorry, Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Again, di ako nagpe-pray, ina, binabasa ko lang, just to be clear. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. See, that is, a, that is an intercessory work, a mediatorial work. Someone who mediates, someone na, na mamagitan, someone na nasa gitna. Pray for us. Okay? You know, understanding nila kay Mary. Nababalikan ko lang, may, may, may kasunod na quote doon sa encyclical. Sabi uli ni Pope Pius XII, Furthermore, her only son, condescending to his mother's prayers in Cana of Galilee, performed the miracle by which the, his disciples believed in him. It was she, the second Eve. Okay, second Eve, ang title na binigay sa kanya ng Roman Catholicism, who, free from all sin, original or personal, and always most intimately united with her son, eto, she offered Christ on Golgotha to the Eternal Father for all the children of Adam, sin stained by his unhappy fall, and her mother's rights and mother's love were included in the Holocaust. So there, Mary offering her son to the Father. Marami pang titles si Mary as a co-redemptrix, siya ay advocate, siya ay auxiliatrix, adjutrix, mediator, or the second Eve. Okay? But we're saying, sabi natin kanina, if Adam was the federal head, if Adam was the representative of all mankind, meaning when he sinned, all mankind sinned, Christ also is the federal head. He is the representative of all elect. Therefore, his righteousness is imputed to the elect. Okay? Sin, guilt of Adam, were imputed to all mankind when he sinned. Of course, by faith, Christ's righteousness is imputed to his people. Ibig sabihin, God looks at us, ang nakikita niya ay ang righteousness ng kanyang anak na si Yeso Cristo. Yun yung reason kaya tayo hindi condemned. Kaya tayo, hindi, kaya tayo justified because what he sees is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And not our guilt. Why? Not our sin. Bakit? Because that was imputed to Christ on the cross. And Christ died for our sins. Sabi sa Romans chapter 5 verse 19, For as by the one man's disobedience, this is Adam, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, this is Jesus Christ, the many will be made righteous. R.C. Sproul said, and I quote, Mary acquiesced humbly and obediently just as any child of God should acquiesce to his will. This was an act of supreme humility. She was saying, if this is what the Lord wants, I am willing to do it. Okay? Kumbaga parang federal headship ang dating. Right? In the Protestant view, Mary was simply consenting to the Lord's will for her. Protestants see nothing in the announcement to indicate that the angel was asking for her permission. O nga naman. According to Rome, however, Mary's statement was far more. It was a fiat. It was a decree. It was a command. According to this view, Mary was saying, let it be so. She was making the command. And if she had not, then there would be no redemption. The whole act of redemption in Jesus Christ, the very incarnation itself, hung on Mary's response. This is why they believe that she is a co-redemptrix. Fourthly, they believe in the perpetual virginity of Mary. Okay? For them, 
to affirm that Mary is pure, that she is pure even after giving birth. They believe, they said, the understanding nila doon resulted to the, jo- to the doctrine that, was, that Mary was a virgin before the birth of Christ and perpetuated that virginity even after the birth of Christ. Yes, uh, medyo, na, ma, ano to, very mysterious doctrine ito even sa Romanism. In fact, even Martin Luther uh, naniwala sa perpetual virginity and a lot more. Okay, we're not saying, of course, that they are correct doon. Okay? So Romanists believe that it was a physically miraculous birth rather than a natural one. Of course, natural one, talagang ilalabas yung bata, pero ito, supernatural. We don't know kung paano specifically. Okay? Sabi nga sa catechism, ng Catholic Church, the deepening of faith in the virgin, virginal motherhood led the church to confess Mary's real and perpetual virginity even in the act of giving birth to the Son of God made man. In fact, Christ's birth did not diminish His mother's virginal integrity but sanctified it. Ibig sabihin, she was made pure. She's so pure na ang kanyang reproductive organ remained perpetually virgin. Ganon ang understanding nila. And yes, there are, even in, in the Catechism and even in some Roman Catholicism books, they go deeper in this theology na even body parts ay talagang inilalagay nila sa kanilang mga sulat just to communicate that really it, was in, it, it wasn't a natural birth for Christ. It was supernatural. Of course, hindi ko na yun nilagay dito. Okay? And so the liturgy of the church celebrates Mary as pure, as uh, the ever virgin. Okay? Sabi ni Martin Bertram, He was born of the Immaculate Virgin Mary without changing her physical and spiritual virginity. She gave birth without labor, without pain, and injury to herself. Not as Eve and all other women, but because by the Holy Spirit and without sin, she became fertile, conceived, and gave birth in a way granted to no other women. Also, this, theolo- this doctrine extends when they say that she, uh, she is a perpetual virgin. Ibig sabihin, hindi rin sila naging intimate ni Joseph. Okay? Kasi, of course, sa marriage, it is, uh, sexual relationship is important in marriage. And mag-asawa sila ni Joseph, that would also mean that she remained virgin. Okay? Marami nagsasabi, uh, even si Thomas Aquinas, sinabi niya na si Mary Dow took a vow of virginity. And so some Protestants uh, believed in this uh, doctrine, okay? In the time of the Reformation. Pero intindihan natin, ha? kasi noong mga time na yon, ang talagang nagpo-flourish na religion ay, of course, Rome. And yung mga pinaglaban nila Martin Luther, even nila Calvin, of course, Reformation specifically, pagdating sa salvation. So may mga bagay that we would disagree sa kanila. Okay? So in Sabi rin sa Karakism, Jesus is Mary's only son, but her spiritual motherhood extends to all men whom indeed He came to save. So, ibig sabihin, she is the mother of all. It also extends. Okay? Just like the scripture calls Abraham in Galatians the father of, of the elect, the father of, uh, technically, siya yung father of the Israelites, but at the same time, siya father of the spiritual descendants niya which is, of course, the church, the father of the faithful. Ganon din daw si, si Mary, mother of the faithful. Okay? The son whom she brought forth is he whom God placed as the firstborn among many brethren. That is, the faithful in whose generation and formation she cooperates with a mother's love. We're saying, of course, hindi naman nanatiling uh, yung hindi naman nanatili ang virginity 
ni Mary because we know na nagkaroon naman ng mga kapatid si Jesus Christ. Okay? She had other children with Joseph after Jesus Christ. Malinaw yan sa Mark chapter 6. And in other texts, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Okay, so meron, may mga uh, half-brothers and sisters itong si Jesus Christ. Sabi ni Johannes Wolibius, The nativity of Christ is both natural and supernatural. Natural as he was born in the usual time by the opening of the womb. Supernatural as he was beget of a virgin. The papists, under pretense of maintaining uh, Mary's virginity, affirm that Christ was born of Mary without pain. The womb being shut. See, the womb being shut. Now, although we leave it as a thing doubtful, whether Mary's childbearing was without pain or not, as the ancients thought, yet we deny that Christ came out the womb being shut. I mean, normal ang delivery. No, of course, wala pang CS siguro nun, mga time na yun. Ibig sabihin, ibig sabihin normal, natural rather. Normal, natural. Okay, hindi ito supernatural just as the papists proclaim. Okay? Kasi talagang merong labor, merong pain. Why, why do we say that? Malinaw yun sa curse. Malinaw yun sa Genesis chapter 3. Na ang, ang mga babae ay magkakaroon ng pain sa childbearing. Okay? Fifthly, Romanism believes that Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. Okay? Malaking ano to. Mabigat na titulo ito. Okay? Siya ang Arko ng bagong tipan. Sabi sa catechism, nabanggit ko yata to last week, sabi sa catechism, Mary in whom the Lord himself has just made his dwelling is the daughter of Zion in person. Ano daw? The Ark of the Covenant. The place where the glory of the Lord dwells. She is the dwelling of God with men. Okay? Sabi din sa the shrine, and I quote, The Virgin Mary is the living shrine of the Word of God, the Ark of the New and Eternal Covenant. In fact, St. Luke's account of the Annunciation, yung binasa natin kanina, of the angel to Mary, nicely incorporates the images of the tent of meeting with God in Sinai and of the Temple of Zion. Just as the cloud covered the people of God marching in the desert, and just as the same cloud as a sign of the divine mystery present in the midst of Israel hovered over the Ark of the Covenant. So he, uh, he's making a comparison in the time of the Israel. God, God's presence was with, the, with Israel. How do we know? Kasi yung presensya na doon sa cloud, the, uh, God was guiding Israelites. Okay? And then... Uh, so now, the shadow of the Most High envelops uh, and penetrates the tabernacle of the new covenant that is the womb of Mary. If you remember, in the Old Testament times, uh, merong isang araw where they sacrifice an animal, and the only, one person lang, no, the only priest that can go inside the Holy of Holies to sprinkle blood, the blood of the sacrificed animal doon sa Ark of the Covenant, is none other than the high priest. So, papasok siya doon, so, sprinkle siya ng blood, ano yung, kasi nandoon daw yung pinaka-presensya ng Panginoon sa Ark of the Covenant. Nandoon sa loob ng Ark of the Covenant, the mana inside the jar, the staff of Aaron, the tablets of the written law, and doon. Okay? So, yung mana, and doon, sino ba ang bread of life sa New Testament? Si Jesus Christ. Nasaan si Jesus Christ when he was a baby? Nasa chan ni Mary. Hence, siya ang Ark of the New Covenant. Okay? In their opinion, okay? In their theology. Sixthly, Romanism believes in Mary's bodily assumption to heaven. Okay? They believe that Mary was physically taken to heaven and now participates in all of the benefits that Christ has promised 
His church. Sabi sa Vatican Council, the second, the Immaculate Virgin preserved free from all stain of original sin was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory when her earthly life was over and exalted by the Lord and Queen over all things. Okay? Hindi ito lumang doctrine, ha? This is a doctrine created in the 1950s. In fact, medyo hiwalay pa ang divided ang idea nila of, of uh, bodily assumption ni Mary. Some say that he, he physically died and yet na-assume kaagad, na, na taken up kaagad ang kanyang katawan, body and soul. Some say, hindi siya namatay. Okay? Na siya ay nainok in Genesis 5's words. Right? He, she was, ano ba? Sige na nga, raptured. Yan. She was raptured, taken up into heaven, both body and soul. Okay, again, divided yan. Ha? May nagsasabi na matay talaga siya, and yet, kinuha rin siya kaagad. Okay? They believe that Mary is the mother of God. That Mary, uh, the, the one in the womb, was not just a human being who will become a Christotokos or a Christ bearer who will, uh, whose divine being will inhabit that human being. No, we're saying, uh, the, the councils of before us were saying that he was, she was the mother of God in a sense that Christ is God-man, okay, even when he was a baby. Okay, there was not a point in time during his humiliation, during his life here on earth, na hindi siya human being at hindi siya Diyos. He was God-man. Okay? During his time here on earth, ang ibig ko sabihin. Okay? But of course, the Romanism redefined that into mean, uh, meaning na ang mother of God thou should be revered. Kasi mother of God. So ibig sabihin, either ang worship mo sa kanya ay katumbas ng Diyos, or probably mas mataas pa, mother of God. Secondly, they believe the, uh, they teach the immaculate conception of Mary. Most Protestants believe before that the term immaculate conception mean na Mary conceived uh, the sinless, sinless Savior. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Pero sabi ng mga Roman Catholicism, ng Roman Catholicism, hindi lang yun. For Mary to be able to conceive of the sinless Savior, she had to be sinless also. That's what Immaculate Conception means now. Okay? Thirdly, Romanism believes that Mary is a co-redemptrix. During the Annunciation, when the angel uh, came to Mary and told her the good news that Emmanuel uh, will be born, and she, will, she, she has been chosen to, uh, to give birth to this awaited Messiah, at nangangailangan daw ng cooperation, ng decree, rather, ni Mary. Because she said, let it be. Because she said that, then it, that means that she also uh, cooperates in the redemption of man. Naniniwala rin sila sa perpetual virginity ni Mary, na si Kristo ay ipinanganak, ng hindi naglabor, hindi nasaktan si Mary, uh, hindi bumukas ang kanyang womb. No? Siya ay nanatiling birhen. Uh, of course, that is to affirm her purity. Okay? Para siya talaga ay pure. Uh, fifthly, they believe that she is the Ark of the New Covenant. Um, and sixthly, siya ay taken up, body and soul. And hindi lang yun, ha? Hindi lang, hindi lang siya nauna sa rest of mankind sa pagiging sa kanyang bodily assumption. Ang sinasabi nila dito is that they, Mary was also participating in giving us, giving the church the benefits. Okay? Christ gives His benefits to His church, pero si Mary also does that. Okay? Hindi lang ito simply uh, something, na, a, a doctrine about her being taken up body and soul. Hindi, may purpose. Siya rin ay may uh, binibigyan niya, pinapalakas niya ang Roman Catholic Church. Ganong klaseng benefits. Okay? Ganong klaseng benefits ang meron si Mary. So what do we say? Firstly, brethren, we must stand firm and maintain that we have no common cause 
with Roman Catholicism in the gospel. Okay? Some may say they are our brothers and sisters in the faith. No, they're not. Maybe brothers and sisters sa pamilya, yes, brothers and sisters in that way, but by faith, brothers and sisters in a way that we are all part of one household of God, the church, the true church, we say no. No, we're not. Okay? Maraming mga, uh, even mga Protestants in the past years, uh, sila ay nakikisali sa mga Roman Catholics at sinasabi nila that they should be one because they, they preach love, they preach Jesus Christ. Iisa lang naman tayo. So dapat mag-anib tayo. Magsama-sama tayong lahat. Pero ang totoo niyan, parang binabaliktad natin yung nangyari sa Reformation. Ang ginawa ng Reformation, humiwalay sila. The problem now is that many, uh, many Bible-believing Christians, no? true brothers and sisters of ours, try and try their best to na, na tanggalin yung division na ginawa ng reformation okay we should stand firm okay hindi natin brothers and sisters ang roman catholicism we must stand firm doon i'm reminded of um uh the si yung sa ECT you evangelicals and uh, Catholics Together, if you're familiar with that. It's a group of evangelicals. Pag sinabi po natin evangelicals, ito po yung uh, mga naniniwala sa salvation by faith alone, in Christ alone, uh, in, by grace alone. Ito po yun. No, tayo po, evangelicals. Pag sinabi natin Catholics, uh, of course, kapag hinambing natin yung sa evangelicals, Catholics yung Roman Catholicism. But then, they are saying that uh, itong mga nasa group ng ECT, yung Evangelicals and Catholics together, gumawa sila ng documents, sino profess nila that they are really together, they profess the same uh, God. Why not be together and profess love to the world? Isa doon, unfortunately, si J.I. Packer. Now, si J.I. Packer was a, uh, a faithful man. Okay? Hindi naman, of course, perfect si J.I. Packer. Okay? So, okay na okay po si J.I. Packer. However, it's just that nakianib siya dito. No? Nakisama siya dito sa ECT. Okay? Now, one of the, of course, yung mga talagang pumigil sa kanya, ay walang iba kundi sila R.C. Sproul at si John MacArthur. There was a time, kinakwento ni John MacArthur doon sa funeral ni R.C. Sproul. Uh, kinakwento ni John MacArthur how R.C. Sproul was so zealous para hatakin daw si J.I. Packer paalis sa ECT. Kasi sinasabi ni R.C. Sproul, tumayo pa daw si R.C. Sproul sa mesa just to tell our J.I. Packer na hindi natin sila brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? So again, J.I. Packer was a faithful evangelical. Ha? Uh, don't get me wrong. Pero yun lang yung time na nakita nila R.C. Sproul and John MacArthur na pagkakamali na dapat hindi sumama doon si J.I. Packer. Okay? Marami pa yan. I think si Rick Warren din yata is trying to unite all other religions. Uh, I think even Muslims. But I say we stand firm, brethren. Secondly, oh sorry, let me, let me quote R.C. Pro. He said, the Reformation is not over. Okay? Oh, just like this lecture is not yet over. Wait lang. The Reformation is not over. <laughs> it cannot be over and must not be over until all who call themselves Christians have one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. The cause of sola scriptura, sola fide, sola gratia, solus Christus, and soli Deo gloria remains the cause of and for biblical truth. Kaya nga natin sinasabi, na dapat patuloy ang reformation. Secondly, as individuals, we must love our neighbors. And when we say love, they're the neighbors who are in Roman Catholic system, when we say love, we mean by telling them the truth of the gospel. Okay? They have to know. They have to know. 
share them, proclaim to them the gospel. Tell them that the images that they worship does not give them merit. It doesn't do anything. In fact, lalo silang lalayo at lalayo sa Diyos. Dahil sinasabi mismo ng Diyos na ayaw niya ng imahe. That you should worship Him in spirit and truth. Not by sight. Thirdly, and so, again, no, as individuals, love them, tell them the truth, befriend them, spend time with them, and by doing so, earn the right, sabi ni Arsis Prol din to, earn the right to lovingly critique their views. Okay? Thirdly, kaya nga po, sorry, kaya nga natin to pinag-aaralan para mas maintindihan natin how we will be able to properly critique their views. Thirdly, pray that God would grant them repentance and faith in Christ. At the end of the day, hindi nakasalalay sa atin ang salvation. No, we were we were just but instruments. Yes, gumagamit ang Panginoon ng human instrumentality to proclaim the word of God, to proclaim the gospel, gaya na sabi na sa Romans chapter 10, na hindi maririnig yun kung walang magpipreach. So gumagamit siya. But at the end of the day, it is God alone who saves. But yes, they have to hear the gospel. They need to hear it. So as a conclusion, is Roman Catholicism a Christian religion? Roman Catholicism does not proclaim the biblical gospel. Therefore, it is not a Christian religion. Let us then stand for the true biblical gospel. And this is the gospel. Jesus Christ alone saves and Him crucified. Wala nang iba. Yun lang. Next week, we will start our first uh, lecture on in, in a new series. Uh, so today, ang katapusan ng ating Roman Catholicism uh, lectures. Next week, we'll start this series called Church Discipline as a Means of Grace. Our first lecture is about maintaining mark is about church discipline as a maintaining mark of a true church. Sige po, any questions? Pas dun po sa uh, sinabi nila na si Jesus para hindi magkaroon ng si Jesus para hindi magkaroon ng original sin, kailangan si Mary wala ring sin or sinless. Um, tayo po ba, ano po ba ang theological explanation nun? Paano magiging sinless si Christ kung, kung si Mary ay uh, may original sin? Ano po ba? Kasi parang hindi po siya na banggit lang po kanina. Kung right. paano natin masasabi na hindi na inherit ni Christ right. yung original sin. Right. Uh, good question. Uh, maganda yan. Pinapakita actually sa, uh, sa genealogies yan. Pag nakita mo genealogy, they, we have two genealogies in Matthew chapter 1. And I think the other one is Luke, if I remember right. Luke chapter 3. Uh, or Luke, uh, Luke chapter 3. Kaya importante yung genealogy. Sa Matthew chapter 1, we will see the, the, yung, yung matitrace natin yung origin ni Christ sa, um, uh, kay, uh, kay Joseph. Pagdating doon sa, sa Luke, sa genealogy niya kay Mary. So makikita natin doon na sa, sa genealogy, hindi sinasabi na talagang anak siya ni Joseph. Kasi malinaw sa annunciation na anak siya, in a way, he, the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. So may, merong humanity at merong deity na talagang uh, reason kung bakit nag-conceive si Kristo. So doon pa lang, hindi siya na-conceive ng isang sinless head. A sin sinner who is a head, who Joseph, hindi siya, hindi galing sa kanya yung seed, technically. Galing mismo sa Diyos. Okay? Now, of course, uh, ini, na ano kay Mary, na ilagay sa womb niya. That explains the sinlessness of Christ. Na hindi siya galing sa isang human dad, human father, galing siya mismo sa Diyos. Thank you, Pupas. So, add to that, kaya naman kasi pinuput forward ng Roman Catholicism uh, na si uh, si Kristo si si Kristo ay sinless primarily para iangat nila si Mary talaga 
Yun talaga yun. Na okay, sinless si Christ, then therefore, sinless si Mary. Kasi bakit huminto kay Mary? Bakit hindi, uh, hindi pa umabot dun sa mga lolo, uh, lolo niya sa tuhod? Meron ba nun? Uh, yung mga great-great-grandfather niya, bakit hindi rin sila sinless? Ang primary, par- primary purpose lang talaga nila is to mix, mix, make Mary a sinless human being. Yun lang talaga yun. Um, question that would want to remain anonymous. How would the Roman Catholics... Uh, Digong Glenn, sorry, pwede pa. Sorry. How would the Roman Catholics defend their view of the Immaculate Conception of Mary in relation to Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 49? Dain ko kayo pas. <laughs> Magnificat. Mary Luke calling one. her... Luke chapter 1, 46 to 49, Mary calling God her Savior. Repeat ko lang po. How would the Roman Catholics defend their view of the Immaculate Conception of Mary in relation to Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 49? Wait, wait, when you say immaculate conception that she was a sinless person, uh, ako, I will use this also uh, sa mga Roman Catholics. Uh, I don't know specifically how they defend this. Uh, I'm not a Roman Catholic apologist. Uh, I studied their etong theology nila, pero I have no idea kung paano sila lulusot dito. Kasi I, I, I myself will use this, right? Uh, to to uh, to combat their heretical view on Mary. So, thank you. So, kahit nag-anonymous siya, kilala ko kasi siya. So, si, ito dahil. Hindi ko na nga. Sige po, any more questions? Thank you sa question. Any more questions? Mukhang wala na po. Going once... Or if there's any question about the previous lectures, since ito na yung huling ano natin. Questions? Going once. Going twice. Okay. All right. Sige. Uh, Deacon, paki. Thank you. Hindi ko magalaw yung slide. Uh, I think naka-disable sa akin to to use the slide. Ah, uh, to try again. It's looking for is it open? Not working. Uh, can, can you try closing the uh, the power the keynote and then reopening? Thank you. Not working. Yeah, now it's working. <clears throat> Nikon, there's a there's a red. Hindi ko lang kung what's happening. Um, 
Oh, now it's okay. Hindi ko lang nangyari kanina. Alright, sige. Um, so before we sing our response song, so our next series again is about church discipline. Uh, our aim is to for us to dig deeper. Um, kasi dinaanan natin to, when we studied sorry, when we studied church discipline before, it was uh, kumbaga, tatlong, tatlong lectures lang yun sa, ang, ang series natin was about the doctrine of the church but our plan here is to dig deeper uh, we're gonna look at uh, the different uh, approaches in discipline yung formative yung um, preventive at saka we will spend a lot more time doon sa tinatawag na corrective and hopefully maintindihan natin ang mga roles natin as an as an erring member but also as an active member no lahat ay mayroong active roles pagdating sa church discipline and i hope that it would help all of us sige let us sing our response song let us all stand we'll sing reformation hymn